Hey everybody, it's Zach here at the courts for a playtest and performance review of the Nike Air Zoom GP Turbos. This is the latest line of Nike tennis shoes to drop for summer and fall of 2020. Now these are brand new, they just came out and I got my hands on a pair. These have some incredible new tech in them, borrowed from the world of Nike running and basketball with an upper reminiscent of the Nike Vaporfly Next Percent, as well as a double stacked air zoom unit in the midsole, reminiscent of their basketball shoes, as well as an air zoom unit that goes all the way to the forefoot, a la their basketball lineup of shoes. So today we're gonna perform our on-court play test, our serve test, and we're gonna put them through the suicide test. And we're gonna find out if these are more fashion, function, or maybe a bit of both. And heads up, if you're new to the channel, I will be cutting these in half in a few weeks, as well as dissecting them to do some mechanical and durability tests on them, as well as seeing how they held up over a few weeks of play. So if you wanna see that video, hit the subscribe button and notification bell. So now for our play test. Now when I put these on, I did notice they were incredibly light. These are a hardcore shoe. I did notice that the forefoot was pretty snug. However, I had no problems breaking them in, even with my wide foot. And the vapor weave in the top, that mesh lining up here, this woven lining, similar to the Nike Vapor Flies, really stretched as soon as I put my foot in it. So it did give me a snug feel. However, I didn't feel like my feet were getting cramped in the shoe. Now I immediately noticed when I was tracking down balls or changing direction that this shoe offered me quite a bit of force when I was taking that first initial step. But the doctor and me had to test, did I just feel like that because these were a cool new pair of shoes or was I actually getting that increased push off force and speed? So I had to test it with a suicide test. I always test these shoes against the control for the suicide test, and this time I actually had four others I was play testing, so I was able to get some good data. Now if the tech in these shoes is legit, we should see a better time against the others. As you can see here, the Nike Air Zoom GP Turbo came in at 14.48 seconds. The Wilson Amplifiels came in at 15.06 seconds. The A6 Gel Resolution at number 3, 15.37. The Nike Vapor Cage 4s at 15.9. And the New Balance Fresh From Labs at 16.02. However, those shoes are two months old. Which just goes to show you what two months will do on the outsole of a shoe. Now the GP Turbos were almost a half second faster than even my fastest shoe, the Wilson Amplifield 2.0s. And we all know that half second can mean everything when tracking down that drop shot. Now I think some of that push off force was because of the midsole, the air zoom units, but I also think a lot of it was the treads, the outsole of the shoe. And if you notice on the inside, you got a bulkier, wider herringbone design that really gives you a lot of surface area to grip a hard court. But as you go lateral, as you go toward the outside of the shoe, it gets to be a more choppy pattern, kind of like a clay court shoe. Now what you notice is these swooped um, air units are these air pockets. What these do is allow sliding. They allow air to get in there so you can slide. But I do feel like the wider herringbone on the inside and the choppier on the outside really do give you that best of both worlds on a hard court for gripping and for speed. And these shoes do feature a rocker on the back. It's not as aggressive. Uh, it didn't feel as aggressive as the Air Zoom Vapor Cage 4s. However, this shoe also has a little bit of a higher heel counter, so I think that may have balanced out the instability from the rocker. So let's talk about the performance of the Air Zoom unit of these shoes. You see the double stacked Air Zoom unit here, and then you as well see the Air Zoom unit coming into the forefoot with this little teaser they put, that you can see under the outsole. Now, it did feel like I was getting quite a bit of a spring in my step from these, and Nike does tout that in their press releases. However, I wanted to test that with the serve test to see, do these shoes really give you more of a spring than others? So let's go right to the serve test and see how these compared against others. My average serve height with the Nike Air Zoom GP Turbos was a whopping 35 centimeters. This is compared to the New Balance Fresh Foam LAVs at 25 centimeters. The Nike Air Zoom Vapor Cage 4s at 26.5 centimeters. The Wilson Amplifield 2.0s at 15 centimeters. And not pictured here, the A6 Gel Resolution 8s at 28 centimeters. So if you are on the shorter side of the spectrum like I am for a tennis player, these do appear to give you some more height on your serve. 
Now, the specs on these haven't even come out yet. However, I'm thinking I'm gonna go home and measure them. This is a size 12. Usually we measure them for a size 10 and a half. Now, I never felt unstable in them because of this really fat lateral flange on them. It really kicks out hard and you can see there's a bulky piece of midsole material out here on the lateral flange. So even going side to side with these, even though they are super light, you don't get a really unstable feeling when you're going side to side, especially when you're trying to stop on a dime. And what Nike did, which was so interesting with these, is they combined this weave, this vapor weave up here, with a lot of bulky padding underneath of it, and then this really thick midsole, almost like the vapor flies, this thick foam midsole. And that combined really makes the shoe light, bouncy, but ultra stable. Now we'll see how this holds up over the next two weeks because like some of these shoes that have a lot of foam that feel really good when you first get into them, sometimes after playing in them for a little while, once your foot breaks them in, they start to lose a little bit of their responsiveness. I'm not saying that's gonna happen with these, but if you wanna find out then what two weeks worth of playing on them does to the responsiveness, check out the video where we tear them down in a few weeks. So I think part of the reason why these have such a good bounce in them and you feel such a spring in your step is because that midsole unit, that air zoom unit, really goes across the whole shoe. This shoe reminds me of the A6 Gel Resolution 8 that has this similar material all on the outside of the shoe. And that does give you quite a bit of a spring back when you're on the outside of the shoe. So when you're sliding into a shot or when you're stretching out for a wide forehand and having to run across the court for a backhand. However, on these shoes, that material runs all the way across the shoe onto the inside, the medial side. So you get that feeling with every step, whether you're running side to side or front to back. Now we're talking about push off force of the shoe. The one thing that also gave the shoe a lot of really good push off force is this ultra high heel counter. Now, the reason that this is so important is it locks your Achilles, your heel into the shoe. So when you go to push off, you don't get any of that what's called micro motion in the shoe where your heel comes up and then the shoe comes up. When you have a high heel counter like this, the heel and your shoe come up at the same time because it's locked into the heel. So a couple Easter eggs hiding in this shoe, the GP, Nike Air Zoom GP Turbo, the GP stands for a very old tennis tournament that Nike used to sponsor. And that is an homage to that tournament. Uh, also the Turbo in this shoe, Turbo refers to their running line and their technology for their running shoes, a la this top, this up, um, this upper weave in the shoe. So that's a pretty neat Easter egg on the shoe. They also have some uh, pretty cool lettering here. Um, and then underneath the contents under pressure, obviously alluding to their air zoom unit in the midsole. So obviously, like I said, we are gonna dissect these shoes in a few weeks and see what's really under the hood. I will say though, just play testing them tonight. Uh, what a comfortable shoe. This honestly, probably one of my favorite shoes that I've put on since the old Andy Roddick pumps. The padding in the uppers of them was so comfortable. I mean, it just felt like putting on like a, your favorite pair of slippers in the evening. Uh, but when you went to turn on the Jets, I mean, as many Jets as I can turn on, and, uh, but I really felt like these shoes were just performance, 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 but they did not sacrifice on the comfort. Um, We'll see how these hold up over the next two weeks. And when we tear into them, we'll be able to see how much wear was put on the foam layer, on the outsole, and on the insole. So make sure you stick around for that. Uh, otherwise, um, just a really fun play test tonight. So I hope you guys all have a great day, great night, wherever you are tuning in from. And I'll see you next time.